there, Simon, from SimonWood.com. Shabley, five of them uh, from uh, some of our major retailers in the UK. Um, but the weird thing is, uh, four of them all come from the same organisation. Shabley's got a rather rather decent co-op, uh, and it depends what you look for when you see it. But it, on here it says, for example, Union de Viticulture du, du Chablis. On here it says exactly the same thing. Uh, on here it says Cap de Vigneron de Chablis. It's the same lot, and uh, uh, the good news is they yeah, they, they provide uh, wine for most of our uh, big supermarkets, and um, most of it's pretty good. Or is it? Let's dig in and find uh, out. Uh, so all basic Chablis appellation here, apart from the last one, which is a Premier Cru. Um, first one we have is uh, 2010. We're doing them in vintage order. I've got three 2010s and uh, a 2009 and a 2008 to finish. So this is uh, Sainsbury's Taste the Difference Chablis. 2010. And we're straight into the shabbily groove here. A bit of rhubarb, a bit of apple, a bit of lemon, and it's that strange thing, it manages to be ripe but lean, with this mealiness about it, um, there's a freshness, there's a vitality, uh, yes, rich but lean, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, try this and you'll see what I mean. Clean, taut, tangy style. Um, bring me a pile of shellfish. Um, I would wolf down rather a lot of that. It's really tasty. It's got that perkiness about it. Sometimes uh, um, unoaked Chardonnay can be a bit, uh, a bit anodyne, but here it's got this sprightliness, it's got these liveliness of fruit, and the, the fruit flavours, it's these rich flavours of those fruits that grow in cooler places. So yes, the things like the apples, um, the um, rhubarb, the rhubarb triangle, I'm quite close to the rhubarb tri triangle where I'm tasting at the moment, but um, tasty wine. Let's see whether Waitrose's can compete with that. Um, these t first two both with screw caps, um, and um, yeah, same same guys. Here they're called the Cab de Vigneron de Chablis, but yeah, same guys. This feels like a bit bit richer and dumber. It hasn't quite got that uh, tangy rhubarb tr uh, twang that I liked on the first one. Uh, yeah, it feels like it's maybe got a little bit more opening up to do. It smells good, but not as um, yeah, not as bright and perky as the first one. Let's taste it. But then its perky side does come through. Um, Maybe not as overtly fruity as the first one, but it does feel like a little bit more coiled. And so while the, uh, the Sainsbury's one is showing really nicely now, this feels like it's, it's a bit of a grower. I mean, we're in February now, and I think that uh, come summer, wouldn't be surprised if I prefer them the other way around. But uh, both really nice examples of, uh, of Chablis and uh, young, fresh. I mean, if people are bored with Chardonnay, these are the wines to try because they just, they, you just go, ah. Oh, this is what I want in a wine. I want freshness. I want life beyond fruit. I want fruit, but I also want something else there. And these have got them. They've got that last light, nutty, lazy character, and they've got this uh, sense of a place. It feels like there's there's a coolness about them, and uh, there's also that little bit of mineral character, which uh, which good wine should always have. Right, next one, Louis Morrow at Chablis. Um, doesn't say Marks and Spencers on the front, but it does on the back. And so this is the only one that's not from the. Uh, uh, Union D, uh, whatever they're called, the, the, the Chablis producers. Let's give it a whirl and see how we get on. It's a clean, vibrant, sappy uh, character here. Uh, more on the green apple than, uh, than maybe the previous two. Um, feels like it's, it's going to have, maybe have a bit more of the mineral side, less of the fruit side. Still, I mean, it, 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 smells, it smells really good. I'm really enjoying these. Starts well, but then maybe goes just a little bit flat. Uh, it doesn't seem, yeah, it doesn't have that perky nature of the previous two. There is a touch of that mineral character, but in terms of the sprightliness of fruit, I miss a little bit of that. So it's maybe that the uh, the terroir is getting a chance to uh, to have its uh, its its um, uh, have its say, but uh, the actual grapes maybe they were a, a, the yield might be, might be a little bit too high here. I don't get notice that concentration of flavour that was in the previous two. Hey. Uh, let's move on to the final two, uh, which are both Tesco's um, wines. This is their 2009 uh, Grand Cuvée. Um, they were supposed to send me 2011, but 2009 arrived, but hey, let's give it a whirl. Don't know whether it's the extra year, but uh, it doesn't have that quite sprightliness and bounce that, uh, that were in the first two wines. It feels like it's got quite nice fruit, it's got this generous bit of uh, uh, those ripe citrus fruits and a bit of the, a bit of the very ripe green apple. Uh, not so much on the rhubarb, which I, I got on the, on the Sainsbury's one. I think that's been my pick so far. But it smells okay.
It's funny because the fruit, uh, the fruit has maybe lost some of its uh, perky freshness that, uh, that was certainly in the first couple, but in its place, uh, yes, it's mellowed a bit, so it's not quite as angular. You notice the acidity less. Uh, you notice more of those creamy characters coming through, the creamy nuttiness, um, and uh, yes, still that mineral, uh, mineral spined threading through it all. Good wine, still prefer the Sainsbury's one. Final one is a Premier Cru. Um, doesn't say which it Premier Cru, so that probably means either it's uh, a blend of um, various ones or they they get it from the same one, but uh, want to keep their options open just in case that vineyard source dries up. And again, they were supposed to send 2009 and the 2008 has arrived. Let's see how we get on with that. And a year older, a year wiser. This, this for, for me, uh, feels like it's going to be the most profound of the wines. Uh, the young ones, they were all about sort of like uh, ever so slightly yapping fruit, but yapping in a very, very nice, attractive way, not a Jack Russell type of way. Hopefully I haven't offended any Jack Russell owners there. But uh, uh, yeah, here uh, the, fruit, the fruit characters have, uh, have calmed down, and um, that's when you see the test of a good wine. Uh, if, it's a good, if it's a bad wine, the fruit characters calm down, and there's nothing else there. Here, what's happened is uh, you're getting these soil characters coming through. So there's almost like an earthy, almost like clay-like uh, minerality coming through. And um, uh, some people talk about a bit of gunflint in, in, in Chablis. I don't get that here. I get this, yeah, more on this, on this cl clay side. The fruit is still very much there, but it's not taking centre stage as prominently as it was in, in the earlier wines. Smells good. It's got that richness and sharpness. Um, and it's funny having those two side by side, but that's what Chablis does walks this knife edge of, um, of, of balance. So it, it, you, you're, you, you, your mouth thinks it's going to be a really rich, overwhelming wine. It's this nuttiness, this creaminess, uh, and that more of that earthy character. And then this precise mineral backbone kicks in. The acidity, that, the, the, the ripe, but, uh, but uh, ripe, cool fruit. So the, the lemons, the, uh, uh, the, the, the apples, a uh, little bit of the, um, uh, the rhubarb again here. But... Um, Tasty wine. I still think if I had a choice of uh, things to, to drink tonight, it would be uh, it would be the Sainsbury's one, but uh, that would come a pretty close second. But a nice set of wines. Go out and hoover up some Chablis. See you soon.